when you hear the word ghazni what comes to your mind you will probably remember having read about the turkic invader mahmud of ghazni who invaded india in the 11th century mahmud's capital was the city of ghazni in today's afghanistan where he would take back the riches that he plundered from india along with the desecrated temple idols as trophies of war no more the wealthy and prosperous city it once was Today the city of Ghazni is a mere shadow of its former self but the city's history does not begin with Mahmud but stretches back centuries before him archaeological discoveries around Ghazni have radically altered how we view the history of Ghazni and the rest of Afghanistan on top of a mountain outside Ghazni dominating the Dasht-e Manara plain lies a place called Tapa Sardar A team of Italian archaeologists excavated the site in the 1960s and 1970s and then again in 2003. They discovered the ruins of a Buddhist monastery and temple complex. The Buddhist monastery dates back to the 2nd or 3rd century CE. Among the thousands of artifacts that were unearthed were the remnants of a pot which had the monastery's name inscribed on it, Kanika Maharaja Vihara or the Monastery of the Great King Kanishka. Archaeologists believe that the sacred site of Tapa Sardar was founded during the Kushan period either by Kanishka the 1st or Kanishka the 2nd in the 2nd or 3rd century CE. The archaeologists were also able to reconstruct how the monastery might have looked like. On top of the hill was a flat ground terrace on which the main stupa was raised on a square platform. This stupa was surrounded by smaller shrines, small rooms for the monks to live in. and other monuments the devout would walk around the stupa in a pradakshina or circumambulation on a decorated pathway the shrines inside the monastery not only had the idols of the buddha and bodhisattvas but also hindu deities like this head of an idol of the goddess durga mahishamardini this is how the image might have once looked like images of hindu deities have been found in other parts of afghanistan as well confirming the strong presence of hinduism in the region the chinese traveler xuan zhang also mentions that afghanistan was home to several hindu temples apart from a monastery and idol remnants small fragments of manuscripts from around the 7th century ce have been found at tapa sardar metal objects and especially coins were also found from the excavations of tapa sardar but they disappeared from the store rooms in ghazni during the years of the afghan civil war Many of the idols and sculptures were stored in the National Museum of Kabul but not all of them have survived due to the military conflict in Afghanistan. The Italian archaeologists who unearthed these important finds had in fact even helped to set up a museum in Ghazni in 2013 but that was bombed in the following years. So what do these discoveries tell us? We know that Afghanistan was once a part of the Kushan Empire which also ruled over modern day Pakistan, northern India and parts of central asia a crossroad of ancient civilizations the kushans were at their peak around 1800 years ago the kushans are known for their patronage of several religions including hinduism buddhism and zoroastrianism as seen by the depiction of various deities on their coins and by their mention in several of their inscriptions thanks to the elite patronage and the trade routes that criss crossed the empire Hindu and Buddhist traditions spread to China and the rest of Asia. The monastery at Tapa Sardar was a prestigious religious center which was also used to conduct ceremonies of great political relevance. This is suggested by images depicting members of the ruling elites. The work of the Italian archaeologists helps us understand the region's pre-Islamic past. But what happened to Tapa Sardar? How did this important and wealthy monastery turn into ruins? The monastery was destroyed by a fire in the late 7th century CE, a date which coincides with the dates of the Arab Islamic invasions of the Indian subcontinent. But the site underwent an extensive reconstruction in the late 7th or early 8th century, possibly during the rule of the Shahi kings, until it was finally abandoned in the late 8th or 9th century. The history of Tapa Sardar near Ghazni is an important reminder of not only the region's glorious Indic civilizational footprint but also the bloody, terrible and grotesque way this historical and cultural legacy was treated by foreign invaders. <laughs>